Thriver Thrivers, Authentically Me, Regina B is back with another video. How are you? I hope you've been well. I hope you've been in good health. To all my subscribers, thank you so, so much for supporting the channel, for rocking with the channel and subscribing so that you can know whenever I do these videos, I greatly appreciate it. Shout out to you, CD. I enjoy all of your comments. It makes me feel so close to you. And I just appreciate your love and support and just knowing that there's someone out there that understands what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to do. So shout out to you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where I go through therapy workbooks and I I just share my journey with you. I'm not a licensed professional in any way other than a personal trainer and a yoga instructor and a group fitness instructor and a cosmetologist, but I am not a licensed therapist. I do recommend that you get a therapist if you are survivor if you are a survivor of any kind of trauma, whether it be childhood trauma, adult trauma, um, whether your parents were a narcissist or you dated a narcissist or your spouse is a narcissist. I really recommend that you find a therapist that is familiar with narcissistic abuse to help you along your journey. But until then, if you enjoyed these videos and if you want me to share my thoughts about this therapy workbook that we are revisiting that originally started the channel, it, uh, 30 Days of Hope and Help for the Adult Child of a Narcissist, It's Not You, It's Them. We are to day 17. I have it open, but I haven't got, gone through it. This round of doing this book is impromptu. And like I've said in previous videos, I will be revisiting this. I don't know if it'll be like a every two year anniversary type of thing because it's been two years since I completed the book and did all the original videos along with the book. So I don't know if I'll do like a every two year revisit uh, once I finish this, but yeah, let's get into it. So we are to day 16, The Bottomless Pit. With a narcissist, it's not, what have you done for me? Instead, it's what have you done for me today? Wait, I think we already went through this. Hold on, y'all, hold up. Yes, we. I've already done day 16, but I haven't uploaded the video. So that's where the gap was because I've done day 16. I haven't uploaded it as of this video. It is Monday, September 25th, but I'm going to upload it today, tonight. So we are actually today 17, and I believe that's what I had said originally. So let's get into it. <laughs> day 17, lessons we learn. An apology followed by the word but is not an apology. It's an excuse. Debbie Tudor. The first time the dog bites you, it's the dog's fault. <laughs> West Texas saying, these quotes point out the utter futility of going back into a relationship with a narcissistic parent again and again, somehow hoping that this time it'll be different. I know I did it myself many times and have walked my clients along the same journey. Apologies, promises, or just a sense of guilt compels the sensitive, empathetic scapegoat to try again. We live in a culture that strongly encourages this. Sayings like family is blood and the and be the big person, pressure, uh, who is that? Oh, that's my neighbor. Somebody pulled in front of my house, y'all, sorry. Okay, so it says, we live in a culture that strongly encourages this. Sayings like, family is blood and be the bigger person, pressure us socially. But hear me now, you matter too. Your well-being, your right to live a peaceful life, your right to protect yourself from the risk of harm again and again, you need to protect your family from the consequences of the narcissist effect on you. All of these are important reasons to stay away from this person or at least protect yourself by having others around when together. Hmm. Yes. My thoughts on this. I love Debbie's quote, an apology followed by the word, but is not an apology. I saw something that said, and I don't know if this is just somebody's own conclusion that they came up to or if this is actually true in the Engl English language or English literature. But something said, no matter if it's an apology or a sentence, um, when you put but after it, it pretty much negates everything you said before the but. Because the most important part of the sentence or whatever you're about to say 
is coming after the butt, right? So my way of thinking of that is, man, it was a hard run, but I killed it or I finished it, right? I hit my goal. Something, the word and incorporates everything. So it makes the first part and the latter part equally important. I wanted to go run outside and I did. So I don't know if that makes sense to you, but see everything I just said, I do care if it makes sense to you, but I don't know if it do, you know, so the same thing, I'm, I'm saying the same thing. <laughs> um, so going into that, for me, I've learned and I've experienced it for myself where someone has apologized to you, to me, and but comes after. But it's usually, but you did. Or but I don't, I wasn't trying to do that. Or but blah, 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 but blah, blah, blah. And usually it comes back around to just like, oh, it, I didn't even mean it like that. You know, I'm sorry, but I, I don't think you should have took it that way. Instead of just saying, I'm sorry, and I'll try not to do that again. Like, I cannot tell you how many times, if ever, I've heard my NARC parents say that to me. I'm sorry I did that to you, and I won't do it again. I don't need nothing else after the, I'm sorry, and I won't, just say, and I won't do it again. I don't need you to say, and I love you. I don't need you to just make any, just, you won't do it again. You acknowledged my hurt and you said you won't do it again and <clears throat> excuse me the second quote the first time the dog bites you it's the dog's fault the second time the third time the fourth time the fifth time baby it's your fault because you keep going back and let me stress this i understand what it's like because like i learned in therapy even severely severely abused children who are taken from the home cry for their mothers at night. So we all have a desire. And for those of you, you know, my, my dad was in my life, so I'm just bringing it to that, but we all want that connection, especially the motherly one. They were our first point of contact inside the womb. And so for me, there was this guilt that would make me go back. Well, it is Mother's Day. Well, it is her birthday. Even if she had missed my son's birthday. Siri listening to me. Let me make sure my stuff is still recording. And just was like, I don't sure, I'm not sure I understand. You ain't gonna understand, you a machine. Anyway. So there's this natural desire to want your parent, any parent, to want them to be close to them, to need them. And like I said, time and time again, I would let the guilt push me into contact. I would let the guilt push me into going to family events that I did not want to go to. And all it did was leave me, I was a shell of myself for at least a couple of weeks. And who, like she said, your family suffers the consequences when you put yourself in that situation time and time again. Who had to deal with me as I was a shell of myself? My children, my husband. And that is not fair to them and they don't deserve that. And so finally, coming up on I have to check my journal, but four or five years. Four and my daughter is about to be five. So I'll say, yeah, she wasn't ever in Gracie's life. So five years. Coming up on five years, it, it's hard. The holidays are hard. Birthdays are hard. You get bombarded with all these commercials and all these Thanksgiving family dinners when not a lot of people's Thanksgiving family dinners look like that. And it brings up these feelings of guilt and it brings up this longing, but it's not worth the risk to your mental health and what that will do to your mental health, what that will do to your physical health. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. And like she said, you matter too. Yes, 
be the bigger person. But Jesus died so that sometimes you don't have to be the bigger person because you are forgiven, saved by grace through faith. <laughs> so if you know what I'm saying, like people are always like, be the bigger person, be the bigger person. Listen, I know, baby, I know my weaknesses. Okay, <laughs> so I, that's why I know I need a savior because, hey, me making it on my own is not going to happen because I'm a human living a human experience and I'm going to make mistakes. But anyway, you got to protect yourself. And over the years, this has been something that has been done to my older sister and that was being done to me on and off. And it ends with me. I don't deserve to be treated that way. And if I have time at the end of this video, I'm going to share something with you. I had to apologize to my older son because I did not realize that I was triggered. And I was being a narc parent with him. And thank God for conviction and thank God for the fact that I'm not a true narcissist because I can look at myself and say, oh no, baby, that was not right at all. Anyway, so let's move on before we get too long because I only got like 10 minutes, 14 minutes before I got to go to the bus stop. Affirmation for today. I was not put on this earth to please others, but to live my best life. We repeat our affirmations three times, taking deep breaths. I was not put on this earth to please others, but to live my best life. I was not put on this earth to please others, but to live my best life. I'm not here to make you comfortable. I'm not here to be a little cheerleader. I'm not here to be a little dog who you sick on people. I'm not here to be the sounding board. I'm not here to be abused. I'm not here to play games with. I'm here to live my best life. And by me living my best life, that means that I'm giving God glory. Because he said, I've given you everything you need for a good and godly life. So that means he wants me to live a good, godly life. And that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get after what my get after is because I've been blessed to get after it. And I don't have time to sit around wondering about what you said to me. Thinking about how you're treating me. I don't have time for that. I don't have time. I have time to live my best life, my blessed life, okay? God has blessed me too much for me to sit around and just be, don't let me get going. No, I'm just playing. Okay, so journal to heal, protected contact with the narcissist in my life. I'm gonna go through this for you guys if you follow along and you ever wanna consider it or think about the words that I'm saying for your own personal life. But if you can't tell from this video, I am no contacted, what in a real short synopsis, you can watch my other videos if you wanna know the full details, but we had a disagreement. There was the insult, there was the hunt hanging up on me, and then there was the silent treatment. And that lasted for like a year or two, then she tried to call me again, same exact thing happened, silence treatment treated me, and then I started learning about narcissist abuse and I decided to remain what is no contact. So I don't have any numbers blocked on my phone, nothing like that. I have no grudge in my heart. She wants to reach out. I'm in the great space to do it and to answer the phone and I feel safe, I will. But as of today, September 25th, 2023, we are no contact. So protected contact with the narcissist in my life. Do I want to limit phone calls? Yes. If yes, how many per week, month or year? Um, if I was in, in contact, I would say once a week. Do I want to limit time of day I answer the phone? Yes. Whenever, if I'm busy doing something, I'll call back when I want to. Do I limit, do I want to limit the amount of time we talk? Yeah, I mean, I do that with people in general. People that I don't really want to talk to, but I'm talking to them. Um... Do I want to limit the time we spend face-to-face? -face? Mm, there's no face-to-face -face with us, so neither yes nor no. Do I want to remove myself when they are inebriated or otherwise inappropriate? You can answer that. Do I want to acknowledge birthdays or holidays? No. Um, so yeah, that is day 17. So let me share this with you guys. 
it wasn't until I had to go and humble myself and apologize to my son earlier that I realized that I was triggered. So really quickly, I had just kind of been just nitpicking at him. I don't know, not nitpicking, but just like, you know, your phone's turned up too loud. I'm trying to do this or, and it was really when everybody was gone, right? So my husband's at work, the girls are at school and then my son, he graduated. So he's out of school and he's transitioning into a new job. So he's off. So I would hear his phone or hear him listen to his phone or hear a conversation on his phone. And I'm like, here, put the earbuds in. I don't want to hear your conversation. Or I'm trying to do this yoga and all I hear is you moving around and doing all this stuff. And so I, and I think what I had been doing was being like, okay, well, if you don't have anything to do today, why don't you find something to do? And so he sent me, I, I basically said that today. I was like, okay, the girls are going to be going to school. Dad's going to be at work. If you're not working at your other job, I'm going to need you to find somewhere to be or do so that I can have some peace and quiet during the day. And so he was like, I'm trying to have a relaxing morning. And this is the first morning I haven't had to get up early. And so he sent me this long text message and what kind of started my wheels turning or started God convicting me and me seeing it was he was like, you are trying to kick me out, but I'm not really making any noise or anything. And I hate when people use the word always. So I had to go into my memory bank and I'm like, always. And I'm like, I've never always nothing. It's only been in these last two weeks that I've been like, you need to find somewhere to be because you're being loud. And let me just say this. He does get loud. Um, but it's not a big deal, but he does get loud. And uh, just for my mental and everything like that, I do need quiet time. So anyway, I was looking at that like always. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, when did I start telling him, you know, find somewhere to go for a few hours or what time do you have to, you know, kind of rushing him off. Like, well, what time are you leaving for work? And so I started thinking about it and I was like, it was probably almost three i want to say between two and four weeks ago was school in because it could have been a saturday anyway i was sitting right in here i have a tv over here and i was watching a show and on the show that i was watching the person's mother had passed away and she was just really upset about it in the scene and um crying about it it was it wasn't the mother it was her father and what i was watching was the show on netflix called well mania i could have that show just on repeat i don't know why but i love it, it was, it's a show called well mania and it was getting towards the end of the series but it was explaining what was the incidences leading up to her father's death so it went back in time when she was a teenager and so i was watching it and i don't know if i was making a face or whatever because i've watched this show several times but my middle daughter, my uh, seven-year-old, she walks by and she's like, mommy, you really shouldn't watch this. And I was like, this, why? And she was like, because she's sad because her dad died and you, you know, your mom is dead. And I was like, Ava, my mom's not dead. You know, and I literally did it like that. Like I just smiled and I was like, my mom's not dead. And she was like, oh, and then I was like, well, why would you, why do you think that? I know why she thinks that. Ava was, let's see, if Gracie is five, she was two when my mom ghosted us and didn't reach out about the children to my husband, nor myself, nor my son who had a cell phone, right? So she's two. So she, if she does still have any memory, it's probably very, very little. And I know why she said that, but I just smi I smiled because I'm like, hey, why would you say that? Like, did I ever say to you that? Or, you know, why do you think that? And I would have addressed it. And I put a smile on my face because I didn't want to exhibit any pain or she was already showing me that she was being empathetic to something I didn't know she was even aware of, if that makes sense. And so, I asked her that and she was like, she came and she sat right here and she was like, 
you know, let's not talk about it because I don't want it to make you sad. And I was like, I'm not sad, Ava. And she was like, okay. And so she wa she wandered off. And so I was just like, hmm. And I went back to watching my show. Didn't think nothing of it, y'all. Didn't think not a thing about it. Just was like, that was interesting. And I think at the time I was just like, well, I mean, I haven't, I'm not going to explain that situation to a seven-year-old, but if she was to ask me specifically, like, where's my grandmother and this or that, I would be honest with her and be like, oh, she, you know, doesn't talk to me, so she doesn't talk to you guys. It could be an awkward situation. And she's alive and doing well, I hope. But she just was like, it'll be too sad for you. So I didn't really, man, kids are so freaking intuitive, y'all. Like, they're so like, Ugh. if we don't take that spark from them, and allow people to traumatize them or something like that their their intuition is so quick for those of us that have experienced this trauma we kind of got to dig through the fouls a little bit but i'm getting better though so anyway as i was i forgot about it i forgot about it moved right along been moving through the days and so once i really sat down and thought about what my son was saying and i thought about when i had started being like okay you need to find somewhere to go because i need some quiet i need some time to just gather myself it was around the time that ava had said that to me and we went through that whole experience so i was just so here's the thing though that brought me full circle to that point he sent me that text message. I gave you all that backstory, right? He sent me that text message and I looked at it and I was like, okay, and I felt convicted. And so I was like, I need to go to apologize to him because I don't want him to think that I don't want him here or he can't move freely around in his home. You know, this is his home and I do want him here. That's not, I don't want him to feel that way and his feelings matter and it could come off that way. So that's all I knew of what I was going to say to him. That's all I knew. And so I went in there and I was just like, Lord, I'm going to apologize to him. So I went in there and I was like, just, I just want to say, you know, I'm sorry that I may have been treating you or making you feel like I don't want you here or that you're a disturbance to me or you're a bother to me. That is not my intention. I said, when I'm here, how did I put it? Let me think. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I said, when you see me walking around and I'm here, there's I'm always trying to keep a lid on different thoughts and different feelings. And I said, and one of the biggest wounds is the one that I experienced with my mother. And so there can be days when I am working really hard to not think about that situation and to not feel or think about those feelings to really be in control of my thoughts cognitive behavioral therapy and so if i snap at you it could just be because of a thinking pattern that i'm having and i said um i said for example and then i just spilled out all of that with a of that story with ava and as i was talking and explaining like you didn't even know i haven't told anybody that ava said this to me um, I didn't tell your dad and I just thought that it was just something I was like, whatever, it's not my problem. But I feel like it's something that deep on a deeper level really did disturb me and hurt me. And I feel like I just put it in a jar and put a lid on it. And now I've been, you know, taking it out on the people that I love the most instead of just realizing that that was hurtful and that was disturbing that, you know, my daughter could see that pain on me and maybe she could see the pain from me just watching that. I don't know. And so I'm telling him this and all this is spilling out about the story with Ava and all that. And my voice starts shaking. And I start crying. And, you know, I just was like, I'm just so sorry. You know, I'm, I'm getting better at realizing that I've been triggered and I'm getting better at acknowledging like I've been exhibiting behavior and thinking back to why. And it's those sneaky little things. It's not those easy things. 
It's those sneaky little things that we don't realize have hurt our inner. I did not realize that that had hurt my inner child. I, I did not realize it. And it wasn't until I humbled myself and I had to go to my son and say, I am sorry. And you did not deserve that. And this is why. And this is why I am going to continue the work that I do and I'm going to get better. And it's it's a running joke, but it's like, and you're the first, you're the first. And so a lot of times I make a mistake with you and then that's when I begin to learn. And that's when I begin to say, oh, okay, that's why I was needing silence because there was a feeling on the deep, 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 deep tissue that I was trying to avoid. If that, if that makes sense. I hope it does. I said all that to say, I gotta get to the bus stop to get my girls, but I said all that to say, don't be too hard on yourself. When you make a mistake, learn from it. When you fall down, get back up. If you have children, if you're in a relationship, sometimes learn behavior comes up and it comes out and it's okay to face it and to acknowledge it because that's the only way you're going to be able to change it is when it happens and you acknowledge it for what it is and then you try to change it so never be down on yourself just remember you're a human being learning a human experience and it is a very hard thing to unlearn a learned behavior and it's very hard to practice a new behavior. You just have to keep at it until you get it, okay? Thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you have an opportunity to get out there and get after your get after, make sure you get out there and get after your get after. I love you. God loves you so much more.